Hi, my name is Thorsten Schmidt and welcome back on the NMS Prime channel. Today I want to speak about how does an ISP work and why internet provisioning is required. So let's get started. First of all, I want to explain it on a practical example and I want to explain it uh, on the region of Germany. So let's assume this rectangle is Germany. Then in Germany we have one big um, internet point, access point, which is called um, D6. D6 is one of the biggest uh, internet um, core points um, at the entire world. And at D6 there are many data centers hosted and many uh, cables um, getting together. And from D6 there are also many big um, fiber cables going to the US and also to all other um, countries or uh, like Great Britain and Amsterdam, for example. So here are many servers hosted. So if you want to visit an URL uh, in Germany, then it's a big probability that the, that the page is hosted at D6, at, data, at special data centers here. But this is not this much interesting for this video we want to talk about how does an internet service provider work. And then in Germany, we have many regional internet carriers which have, they, they have um, cable fiber networks inside the entire country. And these are companies like um, big uh, power companies who provide power and also some global players like um, Deutsche Telekom or Vodafone, they have an um, entire uh, fiber network over the entire country. And in Germany, we have about 50% of the cable or of the ISPs are small and medium ISPs and the other 50% are um, at big ISPs like I explained Telekom and Vodafone. And the first thing we need to know is that the D6 is at Frankfurt, so it's the biggest core. And from this, we have many local, regional, or over regional, and um, fiber networks, so core networks. And then the big ISPs, of course, they have their own access network. And um, like I explained, many small and medium network operators exist in Germany. These are about 300 different small and medium network operators and they have um, their own access network. So the first thing we need to split is that we have a core network and then we have local access networks. And the core network is more than 99% is um, fiber cable and the access network has uh, mainly three different technologies, which is FTDH for fiber to the home or um, yeah, fiber cable, then um, coax cable, so the TV cable, and then DSL for digital subscriber line. And like I explained, the small cable operators, they have a of course, different range. So ranging from, let's say 100 modems to uh, multiple 100,000 modems. And of course, this access network is just uh, a small network. So it's just the last mile. This is just a buzzword. So last mile means that the last um, cable segment from um, a router or from a head end to the customer. So here's our customer with a modem. Um, this, this network is called as access network and depending on how big the uh, operator is, they've got their own different color. Um, they've got their own core network. So maybe if it's a bigger cable operator like NetCologne, they have their own um, core network and the smaller ISPs, they don't have their own core network. So small ISPs range, let's say, from a region of multiple uh, hundred meters. So let's say from hundred meters radius to yeah, one hundred kilometer is quite a big ISP in Germany. If you have a region of more than one hundred kilometers, 
Of course, these bigger ISPs, they have their own core network and they are um, either directly connected to the D6 um, core network or they buy um, or rent um, a fiber cable from a local carrier who is directly connected um, to the D6. So this is mainly the technical infrastructure, like I explained, either the access network is by fiber cable, then you have the fiber cable box, it's by coax cable, then you have a cable modem, and if it's uh, with digital subscriber line, then you have a um, DSL box, and these are the access networks. And what is actually required if you are an ISP and you want to get these devices from the customer online is provisioning. Provisioning is just the, the buzzword or the word uh, or the process which is required to get um, a customer device online and to provision it or to register it with your booked um, internet tariff, your speed which you are booked from your ISP. So this entire project or this entire stuff is done by a provisioning system. And this is a little bit the explanation of how an ISP works. If you have any questions regarding this, I will jump into topic. Okay, um, maybe just one word on the financial side of an ISP. Of course, if you are a local or regional ISP, then what are your costs? First of all, you have to get access to the D6 or to the internet. So you need an ISP backbone. Of course, this is not for free. So this is a big cost block, especially for small ISPs. If you're getting larger, then it's shrinking in percentage to your entire costs. Uh, so this is uh, just logical. Um, next thing, of course, you need a local staff for support and for sales and for uh, administration. This is also because then you have your own infrastructure. You either need to buy it or you need to um, get new infrastructure. So build new infrastructure is also a big uh, cost uh, driver. And um, the next thing that you need is um, technical uh, devices, of course, in your head ends and in your um, nodes or in your uh, infrastructure. You need technical devices depending on which um, of the types you are supporting. And if you have your own core network, then you need bigger core routers and switches to get uh, the core network running and connected to your backbone. And these are the main costs um, which an ISP has. And of course, the money is getting in by customers and it's some kind of recurring business model, which means if you have a, a, a contract by the ISP, you pay $20 a year and this is the money an ISP earns. Okay. Thanks for watching until now. If you have any questions, then please comment below. Um, we are from the NMS Prime team. I'm the founder of NMS Prime. NMS Prime is a free and open source provisioning system. So if you wonder how you can get these boxes technically online, then you are on the right channel. Thanks for watching and check out the other videos. We will see you next. Bye.